right, so basically I want to do kind of the most unbiased personal opinion between the Kian, Electron, and Smart Carb. Um, you know, being on the Ushurko team, I had the freedom to kind of choose whatever I thought worked best. And, you know, I had the guys at Smart Carb and Electron reach out to me. And obviously stock is Kian, which has been proven um, through and through. I don't have a Makuni, but personal issues with the Makuni in the past, the one year with KTM, uh, it was definitely tricky to get jetted quickly. So we don't want to talk about the Makuni. So anyways, I guess first I'll start off with the Kian. Um, you know, it's really, it's pretty much true and tested for what it's worth. Um, you know, it could be a little tricky. You have tons of options with needles and um, different slides and then you can mess with obviously the pilot and main jet um, you know for the most part people get too much in their own head and try and get stuff perfect and they mess with too many things at once and next thing you know they can never get their bike running good again so you know we were ended up running the Kian for the first race at King of Motos just because I didn't have enough time to fully dial in the electron or smart carb so you know, the difference between the Kian and uh, the Electronic Smart Carb type setups is, you know, Kian has your standard pilot main jet we're all familiar with, but the Electronic Smart Carb use, they call them metering rods. So it kind of just basically eliminates um, your need for the main, main and pilot jet. I'm not an expert. I don't know anything about this, so don't judge me too much. But I know enough from working and I'm basically testing with these setups that um, I kind of have an idea what's going on here. So with the metering rod, you basically can adjust um, the needle there in the slide. There's different options. Uh, this one's on my bike right now, so I can't show you. But, you know, obviously you have your traditional slide here and then your needle as well in there. So the metering rod is basically, you can ch basically swap out these whole things or the needle, and it just has a different, um, I guess you can say, characteristic about how much fuel or air it lets in. So on top of that, with the, the Electron, you have this, they call it the power jet on top right here. So your power jet is basically for top end type use, and you can richen or lean out the top end. So a lot of people really like the Electron because you have this extra adjustability on the top. So you can really give the bike a lot of juice. And when I rode the bike, I was actually pretty impressed, but it was like almost unusable power for me because it all of a sudden kicked on like a motocross bike and riding extreme stuff and technical. I like that like kind of low end torquey linear lug. So I had some personal issues just trying to get it um, get the characteristics I want out of the bike. I can see for like a YZ250 or someone at the motocross track, um, if they get this thing set up good, really ripping really fast. But it was uh, a little bit more going on to get it set up, kind of like this one where you gotta mess with your your pilot jet and your main jet to get the bike running on the good on the bottom and top. It's tricky to fully uh, get it dialed all around. And that's kind of where I was struggling here with the Electron. I'm sure if I had the time to test with those guys in person, we could probably get it set up pretty dang good. Um, but, you know, I just, at the same time, I want to focus on racing and it's uh, kind of tricky for everyone's schedules to meet up. Also, one thing to keep in mind, it's not, you know, a deal breaker or anything, but, um, you know, the key in and smart carb, everyone usually uses metric systems on the bike and the Electron, uh, I believe was designed in the USA and it's actually the guy who holds the patent for Electron apparently is the same guy that has the patent on the smart carb. So same guy invented both these carburetors. Both are kind of generically more or less the same, but there's less, um, this one's a little bit more user friendly if you want to go and adjust things. This one, there's a couple more ways to adjust it, but at the same time you can almost maybe fine tune it a little bit more. But this one does a lot, just kind of does it more for you, I feel like. So one thing to keep in mind, this has standard um, bolts on. You can see I apparently lost one right there. So 
I don't know anyone who really has um, American sizing Allen keys. I think I just rigged it with metric ones and got it to work. And then, um, what's it also again, it's something you can mess with, but the throttle cable that came with it, um, it definitely wasn't, to me, it wasn't up to the same grade as the stock cables. So, um, you know, it's kind of trickier to get the play figured out. And then the spring inside the slide, uh, I noticed right off the bat that the throttle pulls a little bit stiffer. So you could easily probably cut the spring, but I know people don't recommend doing that, but I don't think it's too, too dangerous to do something like that. But cutting the spring will help with basically getting arm pump on the throttle side. So here we move on to the smart carb. Currently I don't have, it's on my bike, I'll go there in a second. Um, so this right here, just basically your idle adjustment. And then the same thing as the Electron, um, your slide and everything has a metering rod in it. So I've gone through three different um, three different sizes now on the metering rod testing with these guys. And basically the metering rod just adjusts your how rich or lean the bike is, your air fuel mixture. So the kind of cool thing here about the, uh, the smart car, this across the top here is basically measures the amount of air flow going in the bike through the intake. So essentially it calibrates how on the airflow, how much fuel it needs to give as you crack the throttle. So it's one thing we had to do on the Sherco is trim the top of the air boot a little bit. So it senses that you can see it's pretty thin right there. So keep in mind, if you have a stock bike, they have um, tutorials online, how to set up every single bike. So it's a little bit different. And, you know, to be honest, um, the bike ran really bad at first and we didn't trim the air boot because we didn't follow directions because that's what guys do we never follow directions and then um you know it was an easy fix luckily once we trimmed the air boot um another thing about the smart carb it has here's the choke here but honestly i never even really used the choke i think i've used it like twice it doesn't really help that much it's not really necessary on the bike so it's that's been kind of helpful so one thing I want to go to basically adjustments now in the carburetors. So I don't have this out. I should probably take this out here. We have, we'll cut, we'll cut the video. I'll take that off so I can show you guys. All right. So I'll take this. No, that's basically the adjuster screw. So anyways, here's the, the slide inside the electron. And this here's your metering rod. Probably can't tell right now, but one side is rounded. The other side is flat. It's curved. On one side, that, that's basically your intake side, and this is um, intake from the air boot. So basically, to adjust this metering rod, if you want to make it richer or leaner, to go in, which will raise the needle up, and the metering rod up will make it richer. Basically the same thing as the needle on your normal carb. You raise it, raise it, and you'll basically richen the bike setup because it allows more fuel to come through. So basically, um, to do that, you push up it's a it's a spring loaded thing so you oh, now it's not going for some reason oh i did yeah so you push up and then rotate it with this little dial you don't actually need this little tool it comes with but you push it up and then it's got clicker moves so you can feel it, the clickers go um you can actually rotate it without pushing up but it's not going to adjust anywhere or, or move up on the clip position so essentially if you want to make it richer you would screw this metering rod up into the slide by pushing up and rotating it and you know obviously you want to go leaner you would go lower it down so one thing i noticed while testing with the bike i felt like i kept going richer with this metering rod and then because it was a little lean for me just kind of starving for fuel and then the cool thing about the electron um if you get the that's kind of more for the bottom end similar to what it is on the key in adjusting the needle position so the cool thing about the electron now you have the power jet which is kind of more for your main we'll call it the main jet even though it's not a main jet at all i hate i hate saying that i'm sorry i apologize but um it was tricky for me to kind of set up both because 
I was looking for more. I was having some running on issues, and if you hear a lot of people, I feel like every time I ride with someone on a KTM with Electron, it feels like the bike's kind of running on and sounding hot. Um, I was kind of having that same exact issue with the Sherco. So I kept adjusting this metering rod here to make it richer, and then I was going richer on this setting as well, but still having running on issues. And I ended up um, getting it too fat on the bottom with this metering rod, and then still having that run on issue at top or still kind of lean starting to feel at the top. So um, I can definitely see the potential how this thing could run really well, but um, you know, maybe I need to, we need to try a different meeting rod or something to get more fuel on top. And then I can go leaner on the clip position, on the needle position here. Sorry, I'm, I'm confusing my traditional carbs with the, the meeting rod here. So anyways, it's, it's really pretty easy to work on. Um, you can almost adjust it on the fly. If you want to adjust the bottom power, um, essentially it's kind of tricky because you got to take your slide all the way off and adjust this metering rod but that's the same issue you would have on the traditional key in adjusting the needle so that's um, something to keep in mind and um, now I'm basically going to discuss the thought process behind the metering rod on the smart carb um, it's kind of the same scenario here but um, just a lot more simple because once you get the right metering rod set up, figured out, which um, I've been doing some testing with them and we figured out a pretty good base setting now on the Sherco because at first they didn't really have anything to go off of. Um, now it's been really easy to adjust and you can do it on the fly without having to take off my slide and adjust the needle like, um, you know, the metering rod here on the Electron or the needle on the Kian. All right, so here I have the same, um, same metering rod set up as the electron where the curve side is the air boot intake side and here's this reed side is flat so with uh the changes i've ended up making with the smart car on the bike was basically going for a richer metering rod which gave more fuel all around but significantly more fuel more on the top end side of things so um i guess adjusting this metering rod is somewhat similar to what would be adjusting the power jet on the electrons so the really nice feature about the smart carb is the adjustability without having to take off your whole slide needle and everything you can just adjust essentially on the fly so remember how i said when adjusting the electron you have to basically push up your meeting rod and rotate it to rich or lean it out so with the electron or with the smart carb they basically figured out a way to use this dial clicker adjustment as the means of riching or leaning the bike and this primarily really only does kind of essentially the same thought process as a pilot jet um kind of the lower rpm revs of the bike so what you do is is twist the throttle all the way open so it'll you know in the slide it'll lift up the whole setup here so when that happens it basically lifts this clicker adjuster all the way until this little guy here. So there's actually basically a key in there. So this goes down and fits and it has, a, I think well over a hundred clicker adjustments on it in here. So this will actually lower or raise the height of the metering rod in the smart carb. And that essentially um, adjusts your lower end power, which is, you know, the same thing as you would do is adjusting your needle position on a key in adjusting the metering rod as well on the Electron. So it's really super easy to do on the on the fly, especially when I was testing, it was nice to basically twist the throttle all the way open, obviously with the bike off, you would not wanna do this with the bike on. So twist the throttle all the way open, push down on this little spring so it'll engage onto the clicker adjusters here. And I believe stock comes at around like 78, 76, 78 turns out. So right in the middle. And so you have 120, I don't know, there's a, I forget how many clicker adjustments are available on it. It's more than you would ever need. And, um, you know, it's kind of cool now where I have two bikes um, I'm testing two different metering rods on each one. And I can get a pretty similar setup between the two, but I found that the richer one is kind of nice for the big wide open hill climbs and stuff like that. So I know there's been a lot of... Uh, 
feedback between people that, you know, the electron and smart carb are no good. I think it's just a matter of spending the time to get whatever suits your style figured out. And I think a lot of people are just used to the traditional main and pilot jet setups of the Keen or Makuni. And, uh, you know, I think this definitely simplifies a lot of things. And I've been really, a lot of things I've really been happy with the linear kind of power characteristics that the smart carb has to offer and the very easy and fast um, adjustability with this clicker up here.